Hello and welcome to Bullish. I'm your host, Alex Wellhelm. Now, today we're talking about India, a country with hundreds of millions of mobile subscribers that you likely don't know enough about. So India, 1.25 billion people. But here's a question. How many of those people actually have a cell phone? Well, according to the CIA World Factbook, there are 944 million mobile subscribers in the country. It's the second highest only to China, and it's hundreds of millions more than in the EU. For context, it's about three times as many as there are in the US. Now, combine that with the fact that 28% of India is under the age of 14, and you have a population of young, mobile-first users. That is the precise audience that many American tech companies want to reach. Think about Snapchat. What really is its target user base? In the mobile-first world, the largest markets aren't always the most economically developed. That could change how products are built, tailored, and even whom they're built by. Fueling all of this, as it turns out, is an ocean of cash. According to one report, venture capital investment grew 261% in India in 2014 to a total of $3.86 billion. It's at least higher than it has been for a half decade. When you combine lots of technology and lots of cash, rapid progress is expected. To tell us what's next for the Indian tech market, we have Mohit Aran. Led by co-founder and CEO Mohit Aran, Cohesity recently launched operations in India and plans to invest $10 million into the market. Aran has degrees from top American and Indian schools and spent time working at Google before branching off to build his own company. With experience living and working in both cultures, Aran sees massive potential in the Indian market, led by its top-notch engineering talent in burgeoning digital culture. Please welcome to the show, Mohit Aran, my friend. Hey, Alex, how are you? Good, good, good. Life is good, but I'm confused. I'm confused and I'm very curious. So I'm, I'm not sure why the Indian PM came to Silicon Valley. According to the BBC, it's been 30, 30 plus years since um, Indian PM's done that. So why do you think Modi picked now right. and Silicon Valley to show up? Right. So you have to realize a lot of the progress that India is making uh, is basically because of its new generation, all the skilled workers bringing in the new era of You tech. mean economic progress, That's right? That's right, okay. economic progress. So, uh, and Modi realizes that the heart of that progress is coming from the Silicon Valley. People come here, they work in great companies like Google. Sure, Mike, they go back. Facebook, Apple, Facebook, the whole Apple, crew. Google. Yeah, yeah. They go back, they train the crowd there, they, they start companies. And that's what bringing in all that prosperity. So technology so, from Silicon Valley is going back to India in yeah, that direction and bringing, right. is, is it bringing innovation? Is it bringing more entrepreneurship? What's the impact of that flow of talent backwards? All of it. Okay. So innovation is going there, entrepreneurship is going there, ethics are going there, work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the Indian work ethic is becoming very much like the US. Is it a positive like thing the, or a negative thing? It's actually um, a, a lot more positive. Okay. Uh, you know, India has kind of been stuck traditionally in the old way of doing things. Like there is a lot of uh, government jobs, and you know when I grew up, uh, you know literally there were only government jobs around. So you just get into a government job, and that's what you do. So essentially, the Silicon Valley ethic of breaking things and building yeah. new things is going back to India. So that's right. But, uh, I was surprised by the reception. So yeah. when, when the PM came, right. uh, Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. twenty thousand people in the stadium. Right. It was massive. That's right. Were you surprised by the scale of reception that he received here? I was not because uh, you know a lot of the younger generation view him as a great leader. Um, you know he's the guy who's supposed to clean up the infrastructure, clean up the corruption, and that's why you know we identify with him. So that's mm -hmm. why all the leaders went there. Hey, hey, do stuff, do more stuff to remove our roadblocks so we can do more business in India. Now in India, there are uh, according to the CIA World yep. Factbook about 944 million mobile subscribers, which yep. is the second most in the world only right. to China. Right. Also, 28% uh, of Indians are under the age of 14. Right. So to me, that sounds like a very mobile first yep. um, driven population. That's right. How does it impact how Indian technology companies right. approach building products for their own right. market? Well, so with all that uh, power in the hands of consumers, technology only grows, right? There are going to be companies uh, that are going to be serving products that could be bought on the mobile stuff. And guess what? Um, with they with are that, already, right? That's, they, yeah. Mobile payments are yeah, a very Now we have the unicorns there, right? We have Flipkart, we have a bunch of other, other companies that are doing phenomenally well. And these are all being bought by through mobiles and, and whatnot. So this is the new era of technology. Is there a strong presence of the desktop web in India, or is it really a mobile first environment entirely? It is a lot of mobile first. Okay. Like, even okay. like the guy who drives like a three wheeler or taxi is now carrying a smartphone. That's how it wants to And that's affordable come. for everyone. It is very affordable. Okay. Oh, trust me. I mean, Google has done an amazing job with Androids. Uh, iPhone is still a little bit more expensive, but you can guy, buy actually cheap Android phones. And that's so what I'm curious, in, in the mobile space, especially yeah. on the young side, things like Snapchat here are yeah. just massive deals. Right. Do you think we're going to see 
American technology companies like Snapchat prosper and do well in India, or are we going to see local companies, maybe of a similar ilk, yeah. uh, grow and dominate those markets? I think India has taken off a lot in e-commerce. So a lot of the American companies well, still- Flipkart, I mean, uh, just Like one. Flipkart. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but a lot of the other companies are still not able to penetrate. I mean, that's why we look at Modi and, hey, clear up the hurdles for ha even that happens. So there's just enough red tape there, it's hard to actually that's right. build. That's right. So does that give foreign companies an advantage over local companies? Uh, it sort of does, because uh, if you want to do anything other than e-commerce, uh, you do it outside India. Okay. Right? E-commerce is beautiful because uh, it's all over the web. But once you actually set up real operations, it's kind of hard because there's still that red tape and stuff. So aside from the red tape and so forth, yeah. is there a characteristic about the Indian market on the mobile side that American companies may not understand as they approach the Indian market? Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, why Baidu did very well in China. I think there is an aspect of the Indian culture which is very, uh, like, local to that. And, and companies uh, have done a good job, like Google has penetrated their market quite a bit. But I think it's still some more distance to go. So we've seen a lot of instability in the Chinese market recently, for example, yeah. and, and a lot of uncertainty on the side of entrepreneurs about where to build. If you were a young Indian entrepreneur right, right now, yeah. and you're, you're in, you know, pick, a, pick a, a city, would you recommend leaving Silicon Valley to build your company and then coming back? Or would you say, stay put, it's developed enough now, be local and build there? Um, if I was in the Silicon Valley, I would stay in the Silicon Valley because I think it's a lot well, less red tape. So, I mean, I have, you've made so your I, own you know, I put my money where my mouth is. Yes. <laughs> uh, but but if uh, you know, I'm driven by, let's say, family ties and I really want to be in India, then there are some places in India that are pretty good for doing business, like Bangalore is one of them. Uh, okay. And before we let you go, one last question. Uh, in 10 years, so yeah. a decade from now, which is more important, which country is more important in the technology space? Is it China or is it India? I think it's India. And it tell is me India. why. Um, you know, skilled population, uh, work ethic very much like the U.S., uh, f values very much like the U.S. Um, the government is getting better at removing the roadblocks. Um, I think a lot of positive things going for India. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much, Alex. Absolutely. Bullish airs every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, and you can find it here on TechCrunch.com.